consider the function f of x which is equal to 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. a. State the domain and range of f. b. Show that f is a 1 to 1 function. And c. Find the inverse function f inverse. So, part a first. a. So what does domain mean? The domain is all the values of x that I'm allowed to put into my function. So all the places where f is defined. So I can think about the places where f is undefined and that will help us define the domain. So f is undefined when the denominator of that fraction, oh sorry, the denominator of that fraction is 0. So when x minus 1 is 0, so i.e. x is equal to 1. So that's when it's undefined. So it must be defined for every possible other value in the real numbers. So the domain of f would be any real number except 1. So the domain of f is the set of real numbers without the set containing just 1. Excellent. What about the range? Well, to me, the easiest way to find the range would be to draw a graph. And especially useful because it says state. And therefore, um, I, don't have to, I don't have to prove what the range is. I just have to write it down. So a graph is perfectly reasonable. Here's a computer program called GeoGebra, which you can download uh, from the internet for free if you like. And here we have f is equal to... 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. Oop, x minus 1. And there it is there. So the range would be the part of the y-axis that I can cover. So I can cover all of this. All of this, possibly not the number 2 by the look of it. Let's put the line y equals 2 in and see. No, my graph gets closer and closer to the line y equals 2, but I don't believe it ever touches it. Just to check, if we put in the line x equals 1, where our function is undefined, yep, graph goes up and up here. It's plus infinity on this side, minus infinity on this side, undefined. Excellent. So from the graph, from graph, um, the range of f is equal to everything except... Excellent. Now for part B. So part B says show that f is a one-to-one -one function. So I need to know what the definition of one-to-one -one is. So f is one-to-one -one if... What does my definition say? f of x1 is equal to f of x2 implies that x1 is equal to x2. What does that mean? That means, well I suppose, um, these values here, the f's, are the y values of my function if I draw it on a graph. And it says that the only way for two y values to, the, to be the same is for the two x values to be the same. So basically that means that every y value is different because, the, because I can't make different y values um, if I choose... I can't get the same y value by choosing different x values. I can only get the same y value by choosing the same x value. So all the y values are different. So let's have a look at my graph. Are any of the y values the same? No, they're all different. And the easiest way to check that is just to um, put in a line, like maybe y equals 5, and see where all the horizontal lines cross the graph. Because if a horizontal line crosses it twice, then that means that two of the y values are the same, which we know isn't possible if it's 1 to 1. So let's have a look at this. In fact, we can put in the place where it crosses, actually. There it is there. So, still crosses it in one spot. Well, 
Ah, uh, we went through the spot where it doesn't actually exist, and we lost our intersection point. Ah, well. It doesn't cross it here. It crosses it here once as well. It doesn't cross it there, but that's okay. We just have to not cross it more than once. So, yep, it's one-to-one -one according to our graph. But is that enough? Well, no, because it says show. Part A said state, which means I could just write it down. And part B says show, so I need to use the definition to show that. So I'll have to actually do the proof. But my definition says that I should start here, and that should I should be able to do working to get to here. And if I can do that, then it's one-to-one. -one. So let's um, do that. So suppose f of x1 is equal to f of x2 um, well that would mean according to the formula for f 2x1 plus 1 over x1 minus 1 would be equal to 2x2 plus 1 over x2 minus 1 because that's what the formula is for f and I could um, multiply both sides by each of these to get them up to the top. So um, this one would move up here, and this one would move up here. So that would be 2x1 plus 1 times x2 minus 1 is equal to 2x2 plus 1 times x1 minus 1. Um, and we can expand that out, so we get 2x2x1 plus... sorry, 2x2x1 plus x2 minus 2x1 minus 1 is equal to 2x2x1 um, minus 2x2 plus x1 minus 1 and we can see that this is on both sides and so is this okay and if we get our 2x2 and shift it over here, I'll get 3x2 and similarly for the x1, so we'll get 3x2 equals 3x1 x2 is equal to x1 so my definition of 1 to 1 says that if I start here I should be able to show this and I have, therefore it's 1 to 1 so therefore f is 1 to 1. Right, part C, find the inverse function C. So what's the definition of the inverse? So f inverse is the function such that f inverse of f of x is equal to x for all x in the domain of f and f of f inverse x is equal to x for all x in the range of f. Okay, that's the definition of the inverse. So that means it's it's designed to cancel out um, f. f inverse cancels out the f and we're just left with the x. f cancels out f inverse and we're just left with the x. Alright, well that still doesn't really tell me how to do it, but like with most math things, I can just give it a name and figure out what it is later. So I'm going to go with that process. Normally with functions we say y equals function of x, so 
let y is equal to the inverse of f of x. So f inverse of x. Okay, so f inverse is designed for cancelling out f. So if I do f to both sides, I'll get f of y is equal to x. So 2y plus 1 over y minus 1 is equal to x. So again, I can multiply both sides by the y minus 1. 2y plus 1 is equal to x times y minus 1. So 2y plus 1 is equal to xy minus x. Um, okay, so what's my aim here? My aim is to get the y on its own. Because if you look up here, uh, y is equal to f inverse of x. So if I could get y equals in terms of x, that would give me the formula for f inverse. So let's try and get the y on, the, on its own. So we'll put all the y's on the left-hand side. So 2y minus xy is equal to minus 1 minus x. Okay. And we can pull the y out the front. y on 2 minus x is equal to minus 1 minus x. So y is equal to minus 1 minus x over 2 minus x. And you know, tradition, traditionally we don't have like to have too many minus signs. And I've got 2 minus x's there. So I'm going to times top and bottom by minus 1. So minus the top would be 1 plus x minus the bottom would be minus 2 plus x. So that is equal to x plus 1 over x minus 2. So that's um, f inverse, so I should write that down. Therefore, f inverse of x is equal to x plus 1 over x minus 2. So here it is. Let's draw it and see if we've got it right. So uh, let's draw the function x plus 1 over x minus 2, like that. Interesting. OK. I'll just um, hide the original x. Or even better, colour in my new one a different colour. So my original one's in blue, my new one is in green. It looks about right. It should be the reflection of y in the line y equals x. So it should be the reflection of f. So let's draw y equals x. There's y equals x. Ooh, it looks like a good reflection because it meets in exactly the same spot. This one goes this side, um, inside on above the line and outside below. And this one's outside above and inside below. I think it is the reflection um, in the y-axis. Sorry, in the line y equals x. So I think I'm pretty good. The other check is to see if the domain of f inverse is the same as the range of f, because that's what it should be. So if we look at f inverse, it'll be undefined when the bottom of this fraction just here is 0, and that's when x equals 2. So the domain of f inverse is r without 2, which is actually uh, the range of f. So we did get it right.